The VO meter, measuring your voiceover progress. Hi there, and welcome to our live stream from VO Atlanta, the VO meter. Measuring your voice over progress. All right, how are you? And popping the mic as we do it. And pop, pop, pop. Um, so I want to apologize. We all have the dreaded con voice today. It's the third day of our con, but if you want any like deep voice, radio, or audio book romance reads, now would be a good day to do that. But uh, how are, right now I'm here with my friend and co-worker, uh, David Toback and Paul Stefano. We're on our third day of the VO Atlanta voiceover conference. How are you guys doing? I am super excited. But I'm I do doing... have the large voice, too. <laughs> you rang. I, th I think we did a little too much screaming at each other last night. Actually, David and I were talking quite a bit last night. And that, in retrospect, was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. How are you, David? I'm doing good, all considering. You sound the best out of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> so malignant. I'm starting to think it was an evil plan. He's like, let's make Paul talk to make him sound terrible <laughs> the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to run this pretty much like a normal show, where we have a couple of our preset segments, and we'll do those and maybe get some audience participation, maybe. Mm -hmm. But first of all, uh, the current events. What's going on with you other than VO Atlanta, Sean, or at other VO Atlanta? Other than VO Atlanta? Why wouldn't we cover the conference while we're here? We'll do that, too. <laughs> So uh, right now, uh, spent quite a few hours over at the GVA booth of the Exhibit Hall. You should definitely come and check us out. Uh, we're talking about our new membership program. We're really excited about that. It's something that we introduced about a year ago, and now we've expanded it into multiple tiers. So uh, we have our VO Beginner, our VO Cadet, and our VO Pro membership tiers. So we really wanted to cover basically any situation based on people's individual schedules and their budgets. And we're really proud with what we came up with. We feel like we have a really comprehensive program of just ongoing training and support. So no matter where you're at in your voiceover career, whether you're just getting started or you just want access to additional resources and support, we can give you that. So uh, if you're at VO Atlanta, you should definitely come visit us at the, the GVA booth to find out about what we're about and see which one of those tiers might be good for you. So what about you, Paul? You talked to both of those smiling faces, too, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Smile for the well, camera, by the way. of course we're happy to be here. We're just like, I'm tired today, man. We should mention, <laughs> by the way, we're streaming live on VO Atlanta TV. So mm. hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. We're not used to being on camera, so. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Sean is. You've done some on-camera stuff, but oh. I'm not used to being on camera. Oh, my. <laughs> So yeah, uh, obviously it's all VO Atlanta all the time right now, and I'm just having a blast. I'm so happy to meet all of my friends and, and coworkers and colleagues. It's really like a big happy family when you show up here after, after the, the conference starts, and even before. Wednesday was just a lot of fun, so lots of hugs. Lots of, uh, lots of reminiscing, and just great to see everybody. So for people who might not know what your role is, because you've gotten quite involved uh, with some of the inner workings, the sausage making, if you will, <laughs> of VO Atlanta. So what, what kind of tasks do they have you doing? I haven't made any sausage. But yeah, so <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I'm with the uh, audiovisual services team here at, at VO Atlanta, and I am behind the scenes mostly, except for right now, I guess, um, setting up equipment, making sure the presenters have everything they need. I'm in charge of all the X sessions. Wow. Except for right now, our, our pal and show contributor, John Rorda, is actually handling the coverage for me. So if Tom Pinto or Kay Bass have any issues, um, John will be happy to handle that while I'm blabbering on right now. So <laughs> thanks to John for that. I really appreciate his help. He's been a, an extreme help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. It's, it's really like a full production. And it's, it's fun. But it is also a lot of work, I have to say. A lot of work. Uh, but, <laughs> but, yeah. but we love every minute of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really apparent. And honestly, like this conference wouldn't be without, or what it is, without the work that you guys do. So I really appreciate it. And our viewers might recognize John as the guy who does our on three. One, two, oh, wait, three. Wait, let me cue like, it up. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to do an impression of him. But okay, do that can... first, and we'll, play, oh. we'll compare. All compare right. And contrast. All right, here we go. Our questionable gear purchase. Okay, and here's the B That's sample. Questionable <laughs> gear purchase. See, Not I bad. Gotta give it a B plus. It was, it B was plus. one of my better ones. I'm telling you, the, the con voice helped, but it's just because, I mean, he's got such a lovely bass tone. I have to put on a voice, but that, he just talks like that all the time. Very jealous. So speaking of questionable gear purchases, it's one of our regular segments. Do you have anything you'd like to report this week? Uh, no, and I haven't. I mean, I would have loved to, uh, I don't know, get some kind of camera equipment or just various audio gear for VO Atlanta. I remember in times past, 
I had my own sort of like iPhone mobile rig attached to a selfie stick kind of thing. Uh, I used some of uh, like sure came out with this motive line of products a few years ago where you can just kind of hook it up into a phone, either into the audio jack or through the lightning connection right now. Um, unfortunately, with Apple's change to like USB-C, that stuff's all obsolete, unfortunately, at least until I upgrade my phone. But uh, no, to long-winded story longer, no, I did not <laughs> have any questionable kind of our purchases. Style. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> rambling, I'm rambling, R-A-M-B-L-I-N. Anyways, Kovac, what about you? <laughs> uh, no, none yet. Almost. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at maybe buying a new computer. Uh, a lot of people, I saw some people getting some Apollo twins, made me very jealous. I know. Uh, oh, so my God. I almost, but I, I, I uh, stood strong and... Save my money for other things. For other things. <laughs> for All because I listened to the show and, and training. Like, yeah. What? What would you do you? that? <laughs> so well, I, um, I have been sort of like drooling over at the BSW book uh, or to booth, excuse me. So that's a broadcast supply worldwide. Uh, yeah, I think yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're one of the exhibitors here, and they've got the speaking of Apollo, they've got the shiny new Apollo Arrow. Oh, so, do they really? Yeah, yeah, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't seen that. It's it's like, in the hall. It is, yeah. It's tiny. It's I was too really, busy it's talking like, to you fools in the, in, when I was in the exhibit hall. I had to go check that out. Mm -hmm. It's like, so sort of, we have a perfect visual prop, but we've got these nice uh, tabletop stands. It's about the size of the base, actually. It's very compact, and the Apollo twin units were already pretty compact themselves. Um, a lot of our viewers probably are familiar with it. Paul uses it. I've gone back and forth about whether I'm going to get one. I don't need it, but I want it, and everyone has one. <laughs> and and like, it's so shiny and pretty. But anyways, it's a cool little compact interface that has um, DSP digital or digital signal, signal processing, processing yep. power. And what he uh, said. What he said. Yes. And the reason why the arrow kind of stands apart is not as it, not only is it even smaller and more compact than the previous models, but um, since it's running on Thunderbolt three, I believe it or USB C or whatever the connection is called, it's actually it doesn't have a power cord. Like the data and power cord is like that one connection mm -hmm. so it's even fewer cables of yeah course, it is thunderbolt 3 that's the one downside yeah. so if you have an older mac or uh, a pc an older pc too you can't really use it yeah so actually i almost made a questionable gear purchase <laughs> two <of> questionable it. <laughs> gear yes. purchases it would seem like but um i don't have a computer that has that port right now and i went i went so far as to even start shopping computers, but that was just a bad idea. <laughs> right. Oh no, that's another rabbit <laughs> can hole. You not, can day. you not have a, a connect a dock connector or like Thunderbolt oh, to, you, to USB? No, it does not. You can't you use can't a dock. Be direct, oh no, it has to be native. Yeah, that's because I researched this obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. How can I make it work? How can exactly. I carry rig it? But it's um, but it's funny because like or it really was uh, Apollo's sort of way to kind of lower the price and. Uh, lower the cost of entry into their great line of products, but I mean, what whatever money you save is going to be going to a new Mac or whichever will or PC, which can still do that. Um, also has that connection as well. But anyways, any other questionable gear purchase? I have not actually. Or, and what we wanted to do really was throw it to the audience. It's, well, we have one audience member right now. What's your name? Kila. Kila. Have Kila. you made any Kila. questionable gear purchases? I haven't. This is my first time here. Oh, oh my no. gosh. Oh. Well, are you are you familiar with our show? Have you listened before? No. Okay. Well, so thank you so much for coming. Yeah. So <laughs> all right. so so we're all about a, a bit of tech geeks and stuff like that, and <laughs> particularly Paul has a terrible habit of buying new equipment <laughs> before each episode. Um, and then but, we commiserate about how much we spent and uh, how it's made our lives not as easy, not much easier than than we thought. Mm -hmm. So the idea always is to to buy something because you think it's going to make your 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 audition is better. You think you're going to book more jobs with it. And as most of the coaches here will tell you, that's really not usually the case. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the equipment you use. It's not the mic. It's it's you, mm -hmm. um, our friend Dan Leonard is fond of saying. So that is, uh, that's why we created the, the name Questionable Gear Purchases because that's what really it has become. It's, it's not really to make yourself better. It's to make yourself feel better sometimes. Well, exactly. And it's <laughs> yeah. not. I mean, we're unabashedly really about it. You know, we, I mean, we we understand that it's like, like you're saying, Dan, it's always like, will it help you read better? Will it help you perform better? Well, you can talk about the confidence aspect, like, and I like looking at the shiny buttons. But, um, yeah, we do understand that that's not the best investment. Once it's, and, and nowadays, it's, uh, we were actually talking, Dan Leonard and I, yesterday, because I asked if he was excited about any new gear. He's like, no, I'm still using a 2i2 or a Yamaha AGO3. 
Um, they haven't really made anything that's wowed in that way. And honestly, the the cost for studios just can or for studio equipment just goes down and down every year. So nowadays, what used to cost like easily a thousand dollars to get a mic interface and some kind of acoustic or or solution like a booth or what have you, um, is now easily five hundred dollars or less. So it's far more attainable for people. And uh, like, if you want any recommendations for equipment, just go back into our early episodes. We have, I know our second episode was all about microphones. We talked about maybe two dozen different kinds that we had either tried or had referred from other talent. And then of course our interface episode, uh, which we had also, well, not as many, about a dozen that time. Yeah, but still, <laughs> well, still too many. Still too many, <laughs> seriously. <would> <laughs> Uh, but it, like that's just us, and we don't want. As we say a couple of times on the show, don't let like don't follow our example. That's the whole reason why we have it is so that you don't have to make these questions. Do what I say, not as I do. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You just say it at the same time. Oh yeah. That wow, that's awesome. awesome. We need to get him on here more. <laughs> Synchronicity. Often. That's right. He's, our dads must have been alike. Yeah. Eight legs. <laughs> um, so the next the next part of our show that we usually do is the VO meter shtick. And because Sean was so kind as to do even more work than he normally does. So you've, if you've been to the VO Atlanta before, you know Sean. He's all over the place volunteering. He's actually up for the Unicorn Award. A Unicorn Grant. Grant, Grant. thank Grant. you. Yeah. Yeah. This year, he's one of the finalists along with um, Scott Chambers and Susan Mazel. Susan Mazel, thank you. So you've probably seen Sean around. If not, you should come talk to him because he's just a heck of a guy. Oh, thank you. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna, we're going to do our, our bumper that Sean was so kind as to get me before the show for the <laughs> VO meter stick and uh, see how it goes. Hey, everybody. It's time for the VO meter stick. What did he say? It's time for the VO meter. Oh, never mind. The VO meter stick. Oh, got it. <laughs> So this is the segment where we talk about something funny that happened to us either at a conference. Hey, there's, hey, like there's a tie-in. <laughs> I was Imagine wondering what that. the segue what was. Segue. I was like, he's being so nice to me, but then we're going to do our funny, like, our funny segue? What's or that? something that happened to us at an audition or just some faux pas we might have made during the last week or since our last episode. So, Sean, do you have anything that's happened to you? And if not, we'll throw it maybe to Keela to talk about how she's mm -hmm. in enjoying the conference so far. Yeah. What do you think? That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me grab you a mic. I'll bring it over. Oh, cool. Woo. I'm going to untangle it here. Oh, was it long? Live TV. Yeah. Or she could just come up here. Yeah, why don't you come over here? We'll, we'll talk right here. <clears throat> right on camera. So, yeah. Is right your back to the camera? So, <laughs> tell us the, uh, <laughs> the, the best part of the conference so far for you. I have well, learned about right. uh, marketing. Uh, how to start doing some direct marketing, because that's a goal. Mm -hmm. I've been asked twice if I was part of the kids group, <laughs> which is very flattering. It's wonderful. I just turned 30, so I clearly, uh, I'm doing all right, and I look like I don't know where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might do that. See how far I can get with that angle? Uh, yeah, I haven't been to where the gear is. Yet. Oh, it's in the exhibit hall. Yeah, there's yeah, a couple of booths. I know <clears throat> SE Electronics has one, uh, and then BSW as well. Okay. That's the banquet level, mm -hmm. right next to the, the, the grand ballroom. Okay. That, this, is, this is my VO leadership. People all, all week would ask me for directions, not just for the exhibit hall or where the, the events are, but the bathroom, uh, where I can find water. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll ask you where something is yeah. later. Please do. We'd have to do I brought candy. I'll give you candy. Awesome. Oh, wow. wow. That's wonderful. Come prepared. She, she's great. Awesome. Hello. Impressive. Hello. Any, any, uh, anything you're looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to learning as much as I can. I'm really new to voiceover, and so I want to just take it all in and then leave feeling like I'm ready to just hit the road running. Absolutely. No, I, I understand. It's like this. That's probably one of the best advantages of something like VO Atlanta because a lot of people who don't come to the event – they're like, oh, it seems like such an investment. Is it really worth it? What's the direct return? And that's that's going to be different for everyone. It's really hard to measure that. Mm -hmm. So, but one thing I can say, it's just the the networking, the friendships that we make at this event, pretty much make like, yeah, it's worth the cost of admission alone. 
And, um, and like you were saying yourself, it's really motivating just because, mm -hmm. um, and some people come in very, like wherever they're at in their career, they are usually able to just get one golden nugget and find a direction and find a focus mm -hmm. and then build, um, to progress their business throughout the year from that starting point. So if you have an opportunity to go to an industry conference like VO Atlanta, highly recommend it. So like make it happen, folks. I mean, you can volunteer, you can get involved with it and reduce the cost that way, um, but highly recommend it or maybe join one of the smaller conferences that are in your area, but definitely build that network, um, meet people in person, shake mm -hmm. some hands and like, yeah, just spread the joy, spread the love. And if I can interject, I mean, I think something that's really good about our industry in general is that how supportive everyone is. And you can come in here and talk to Townsend Coleman, who's Teenage Mutant Ninja Radical, like, dude. You know, is yeah. A star in the industry. And, and he'll just sit down and have lunch with you and talk to you. So uh, you can you know learn a lot from, from the greats. And so that, that's really encouraging. Well, and that's what I love is because there's a lot of big talent here, but there are no big egos. And it's wonderful. Everyone is so genuine and they're really open and supportive and generous in spirit. <laughs> and it's just, it's really motivating to behold. I know uh, my friend Jatem, we were actually on the team challenge last year together. She's an on-camera actress as well. She spent many years in theater. And she was just like, she was tearing up because she's just like, it's so cutthroat compared to what we experience. Okay. okay. And, Thanks so much. I'm sorry for putting yeah, on the spot. Yeah, thank you so much, Keila. <laughs> since we had an audience, I figured we might as well use it. Right yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Thanks Wonderful. for sharing. Thank you so much, Keila, for our extemporaneous interview and joining us. Speaking of interviews, though, we have two wonderful guests today who have joined us. Like I said, we've got my buddy David Toback from the Global Voice Acting Academy. He's our not only is he our chief finance officer, but he does just about everything else. So, so um, David Toback, for bit. people who don't who aren't familiar with you, can you tell us a little about yourself and your involvement with GBAA? Sure. Well, I'm the. Uh, I don't, I guess I'm the operations manager, but <clears throat> excuse me, as you said, I do uh, the everything. Guy. Everything, yeah. <laughs> so I manage uh, the finance, the accounting, the purchases, the marketing, uh, the website, uh, and everything in between, making mm -hmm. sure that the day to day happens and that we provide uh, top level education mm -hmm. uh, to people consistently and with, uh, you know, with no hiccups. No, we, we want to make sure things are at a professional level, not having. Uh, you know, we have a lot of classes and things, so there's a lot of things to coordinate and organize, make sure that people know where they need to go. Uh, so just kind of all the day-to-day, -day, making sure people get what they need when and, they need it, and uh, make sure they get the education that they are, they're yeah. looking for. Yeah, well, David, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on was because you're a, a veteran of VO Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what it means to come back as a, as a returning talent and, and what you've enjoyed as as a, what's your third or fourth? <clears throat> third year, yeah. Third, yeah, so mm -hmm. as a third year member of VO Atlanta, mm -hmm. what, what's been good for you? Uh, well, I think every year I try to get, find something that I want to specialize for that year. I mean, mm -hmm. my first year, uh, I, I was a national uh, sponsorship winner, or is it sponsorship? Or? Scholarship. Or scholarship. scholarship, yeah. I, we, I he was actually, now. yeah, because I was the international winner, and he right. was uh, the national one, and that's right. how we met for the mm -hmm. first time. And, and I came in, and, uh, you know, I was... Like I'm sure, uh, Kayla, right? Kayla, sorry, Kayla. Ah, I pronounced the bell wrong. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when you come, you're just, you're overwhelmed. But wow, you know, the first time you may not know that many people, and it, it's, it's overwhelming, and you, you kind of just fumble around and not really know what you need to do. And mm -hmm. the next year, like, okay, I'm gonna have a plan this year. And so I tried to try to do that every year. And I think this year, uh, my, my main focus has really been GBA. So mm -hmm. I, I do mm -hmm. work full time for them. So. This is kind of a, a cross between a, a work conference for me for, for our purposes and then for myself, a, a educational. So I wanted to make sure I get an X session and go to a couple a couple panels. But, uh, you know, I've been able to see a lot of friendly faces. Like you said, Paul, you know, uh, I got off the, the uh, shuttle and people are just running and hugging you. And mm -hmm. it's just really... A good time I actually had that experience on the shuttle. <laughs> that, I was does, waiting. Yeah. I was waiting for the shuttle, and kind of by myself. And all of a sudden, Uncle Roy comes up, <laughs> and then uh, Brad Highland and John Rorda. So it was like a big party even before we got to the hotel. It was awesome. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there were saying... some poor schmoes who were not with us that were not going to our, our hotel. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, these poor people <laughs> blabbering on nonstop the entire ride. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. We were doing, what was it? We were doing voices in our uh, in our Lyft drive last night. And we were like, we're sorry, we're voice actors. We're at a conference. <laughs> <laughs> you probably get this all the time. That started on the plane for me because <clears throat> there's, a, uh, there's a talent that's in Orlando. I, I live in Orlando. And uh, 
we always wind up being on the same flight every year, it seems. Mm -hmm. And this time we sat next to each other. And from the minute we sat down, we didn't stop talking until we landed. I said, all wow. these people must be, and luckily it's only an hour and a half flight. But yeah. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, was, I mean, these people must be pretty tired about hearing all this stuff around <laughs> us. But hey, at least it wasn't a baby crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just had to entertain them with sock puppets or something. <laughs> There's some impressive voices. <laughs> So, David, as a returning person, I had this 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 problem where I feel like there's too much to do because yeah. now that I if, when I was first coming, I didn't really know a lot of the presenters or mm -hmm. a lot of the sessions, so I didn't know what I was missing. But now I do because I'm looking at the schedule and saying, "Oh, need to go that, need to go, need to go that." <laughs> how, how do you balance that, knowing all the things you want to go to? Uh, I, it's a challenge, I think. I think it's even more challenging this year because there seems to be even more uh, available. Uh, mm -hmm. So there seems to be at least three things that seem to be pretty impactful at every time slot. Um, so I think it's, again, finding that, you know, your your goal for the conference. And if, is, it, if it's, is it marketing or business for this year or is it performance related and try to cater to those panels um, and try to find the things that are going to be valuable for your, for your business where you are right now. You know, some people, uh, like, oh, I want to go to a promo panel, but or I want to go to a promo breakout session. Well, are you studying promo right now? Or, you know, is that something that you're really going to be looking to do or are you just mm -hmm. doing it for fun? So I think getting, bringing too much, putting too much on your plate can, can, can kind of scatter that. So I like trying to be a little bit more focused and mm -hmm. try to pick the things that you think will be the most valuable for where you are right now and uh, moving towards your goals for the next year. Absolutely. Like we were saying, it's almost like there's four conferences going on at once just because like there's some pretty um, clear paths that you can take. For example, there's a lot like there's a big focus on e-learning and narration this year. There's a, a bit of an animation track um, and like, the, of course, the business and marketing. And so you really have to figure out. Um, and, and we're not saying that you shouldn't have any fun at all. Of course, you should take <laughs> advantage of that. I mean, where else are you going to be able to meet Michelangelo or The Tick or some of your favorite um, animation stars or, or like idols in the in the areas of promo or what have you? So definitely make time for that. And um, you really should like it's it's impossible not to have a good time. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, uh, like find the balance. Like for me, I trying to go to a few e-learning panels, but we're also balancing our time promoting GBAA. And um, and just for fun, I'm personally doing some character demos this year, so I can actually rationalize going to a few of those funner animation character-based sessions. I don't so, think that's a word, by the way. Funner. Funner? funner? No. More fun. We oh, just made God. It. I'm an English major. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit that. Yeah, and I would just say, the, the other way to, to approach that is, if you don't have time to get to everything, try and find the people you are going to see as a presenter or or as a, as a host and, and talk to them when you're at lunch. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the great things about VO Atlanta is we have these community lunches where everybody gets together and there's no pressure and, and no egos. You just go down, you can sit down with somebody, have a conversation about your kids, about your dog, mm -hmm. about the, the, your favorite sports team, and maybe not even talk about VO. And everyone, yeah. everyone is really happy to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was to segue on that, or not segue, but to take off on what you said, uh, the first day uh, wound up eating lunch with Dave Fenoy and it was with uh, Brad Venable and a couple other people, and we were just chatting about all kinds of things. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, a, a real life situation, you know, that we were talking about came up. And Dave said, "Wait, I want to teach right here." And he started talking about how you see how you were just doing this. You can apply that to voiceover. And he kind of had a teaching moment because he loves doing that. So yeah. even if you're you're making a relationship with there's a coach or a presenter. You know, usually those people that are coaches, they're coaches for reasons. Or for reasons? See, I'm doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> for a reason. Maybe English they have is reasons. hard. <laughs> but a lot of times they like they like helping people. And so you can get valuable lessons too while you're, you're networking and making friends. So mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, David, thanks for joining us. Um, we actually have another guest who we want to introduce. So, Heather, would you mind saddling up next to me, uh, our open seat here? We are proud to introduce Heather Masters, who is a first timer here at Vio Atlanta. And uh, what are you drinking? What is that? A green tea <laughs> or a magical concoction? Label out. <laughs> awesome. Videoing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're live streaming to Vio Atlanta <laughs> TV. Mm -hmm. I'm not an on-camera actor. No. <laughs> There's so oh, no. acting here. <laughs> As a first timer, Heather, can you tell us what you've enjoyed so far? Um, well, I'd like to, but having been sitting here for the past 10 minutes, I believe everyone stole everything I was going to say. So uh, you can thanks a lot it. for it's that. Fine. That fine. was really great. You're welcome. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, wait, what'd you ask me? 
what I learned. <laughs> what I, are you enjoying so far? Okay. We'll get to that. That was my next question, okay. but thank you for stealing okay, it. Okay, because I have something for that. Okay. What am I enjoying so far? Um, like has already been said, but it's the truth. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just the, the opportunity to be with everyone and to build these relationships. I've only been to one other conference, and that was Wovacon, and I came here with the thought, okay, I met people in real life there. Can I build on those relationships at that point, or am I going to come here and have to start all over? And they're like, I have no idea who you are. Who are you? You know, right, right. And because, which is reasonable, because Mm -hmm. they met me once, you know, at one, and so... I, I think that's been my biggest kind of ah moment is mm-hmm. that it's not been like that at all. The people that I met there, they're gracious enough to remember me and to mm-hmm. talk to me and to and I feel like um, things relationships that kind of got initiated Kindled. <laughs> started. <laughs> that's nice the word. It worked. I'm a, I'm a speechifier. Yeah, we're here on the synonym um, panel. <laughs> um, they, they've been able to be slightly expanded here and I mm-hmm. feel like built upon. And that, more than anything, makes me feel like, and so I'm going to come again. Because if, you know, if, okay, we met here, built a little here, well, I feel like that's going to continue, you know, and for future conferences, we can build more like, okay, so what did you do this past year? And what, you know, and mm-hmm. kind of build real relationships, which is so important and and vastly grander than, you know, I like your Facebook picture. Well, I mean, so. except, but I've just been watching you interact with some of these people, like, who are, like, stars and idols for all of us here. And, but, I mean, you would never know that this is her first time, that, like, she's just going there, she's composed, she's confident, she's funny and engaging, and she's having a great time, and she's leaving a good impression on people. So it's just, as like... As far as you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I paid Sean to say oh, I'm just laying on thick. Can I... But, yeah. No, go. No, 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 My no, bad. No, well, I was just going to say, you know, what's really funny is that I, I, I would like to say, like, a little hint to people who are perhaps not naturally extroverted, mm-hmm. which I fake it really well, but I'm actually not. I'm actually an introvert. And were it not for the fact that I had met a few people and could kind of, like... Well, I told Paul Comfort in buddies. the very beginning, like, I was like, Paul, I may just kind of glom on to you, you know, and and so people that I met before, because I was brave enough to come to one or brave enough mm-hmm. to, in, you know, an inst- inst- initiate. I can't do it point. every time, Heather, okay? <laughs> but because of that, then now, because um, I feel like the first conference I went to, I very much did just kind of stand and stand in the back and, and wasn't, you know, and, and just kind of made a few connections, but was very intimidated. And very, mm-hmm. and so I feel like for this one, those people that have been kind enough to remember me, now I kind of am bold enough to be like, I'm going to come stand next to you. Mm-hmm. And that's all it, that's all it takes to be able to... Um, have a friendly face that you can recognize, even just to come stand next to, and then conversation starts. And then it's organic and natural and mm-hmm. hallelujah. Lots of smart networking. I mean, that's, that's kind of networking 101, which maybe you didn't know, but you, you've, uh, you've created it now. But I've, yeah, you, you find a wingman, basically, or, mm-hmm. or wing person. Uh, be, I mean, heck, a lot PC. of people will come with a friend or a partner or, like, or an accountability buddy or whatever you want to call it. Right. And to just kind of, like you said, have someone to fall back on. And it's really cool because it's like... And, Like we were talking about before, people wonder what you get out of the conference, exactly what you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you, if like, if you isolate yourself and they're just kind of a wallflower, I mean, you can, you can learn a little bit, but I mean, you, if you get actively involved and you push yourself out of your uh, comfort shell or blending things together, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, economical, (laughs) but anyways, it's it's worth noting though, that 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 only works when walking on egg zones over here. Like, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) that only works when the, when the community in which you're interacting is welcoming. And that's, again, it's worth mentioning. That's the great part of the the voiceover community is that everyone is so welcoming. I've been in in other businesses, as we talked about in in Mm -hmm. previous lives, and it's not always (laughs) like that. You can go into an event and you try and talk to somebody, and it's like talking to a wall. Yeah. Mm. Either because they're not good at networking, or sometimes because they just don't want to talk to you. Yeah, and or they want to withhold their information. That, you know? Yeah, that too. That's the other great part about right. the community for, for voiceover is that there's no secrets mm-hmm. for the most part. People are willing to share what they've learned and sort of pay it forward, and that's just so fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to say that that is something that I'm continually like 
for real. <laughs> because, because even, you know, I come from a theater background, and, and sometimes in the theater world, I come from a very tiny pool of theater. And man, if you, when I went there, I was like, hey, you know, I, I have a theater degree. I, I should be one of you. And they were like, we don't know you. I know. And that was it. Like, like they completely dismissed me. And, and, I, and I, it, I kind of laughed because I was like, oh, you're not L.A. You're not, you know, you're I a know, tiny like, little place. Like, really? Yeah, where was it? Oh, talent that. Goes. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, Alaska. Uh, <laughs> the the foremost theater. <laughs> right, it's worth mentioning that this was Alaska. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Which is yeah, which but that kind of made it even more so when he says things like that, you know, from an outside perspective, you're like, but but really, mm. you know, and that's one thing that I'm continually baffled by, um, because I don't think it's that way in the rest of the entertainment industry, but the yeah. people here they. They genuinely want to help. They, mm-hmm. I just passed Ellie Ray Hennessy, who's kind of a big deal. Amazing. And in kind the hallway, of. and she, she may have been coming from an accession or no, whatever. She was coming from something, and I can tell just you. people, yeah. people, <laughs> people, people. <laughs> well, were, trusty, but people schedule. were stopping her as she's walking. And you know what? I'm sure she's tired. I'm mm-hmm. sure you know she has been going nonstop. But it wasn't like. You know, she didn't have her handlers by her yeah. that were like, back up. Ellie back Ray off. is in the Da Vinci room right now, <laughs> right now on the lower level. But Thank she you, stopped and she was completely engaging and completely friendly. And where yeah. I just don't know where else you can find a community like this. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I, had, I had a business life in my previous life, and, you know, people step on you to get over you. And here, people take out the ladder and prop it up to help you come up as well. So <laughs> they will offer complete, you their shoulders. Yeah, Come on, like here, get on my back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think it's because there's a common struggle that you know there's no guidebook to voiceover. You know, yeah, you can go into the theater, and there's a, there's schools and programs, right. and you can kind of have a, gui- a guide. And here, you just kind of fumble around until you figure out. And so everyone has that same experience. And uh, and I think there's also that that ego at play. You know, you, there's not as much of a, a drive to you know be on camera or mm-hmm. and it, and I think it has something to do with uh, just our personalities in general. And so it's really refreshing. I know Paul's same, same you know coming from different lives, and it, it's so refreshing when you come into a place and you're like you're like this is, can't be real. This can't be real. Yeah, and it's like you're saying. So we were talking about people who might be like, believe it or not, I'm an introvert too. A lot of people are like, Rrr. but yeah, and like, and and I will say, you gotta you gotta make time to recharge and self care. But if you're worried about being able to interact with people, keep in mind this is an entire conference of 500, 600 people who love the same thing you do. Except for the fine folks like, from from Cotter Airways. <laughs> oh, yeah. I rode in the elevator yesterday with like four flight attendants and a pilot and, and all their luggage. Oh. It was kind of cramped. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those poor people. I feel so I mean, bad they for should them. Have been like, What's going on? This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were kind of. If I can make one suggestion as, as, a, as a View Atlanta veteran, for other people, when they start to come back, find that person that looks like they're a deer in the headlights and say mm-hmm. hi to them. You yeah. know, pay it forward. Because I, I think I found some people that are... They look like they're new, and I'll just be like, "Oh, hey, how you doing?" And get started. I'm David Tobak. Yeah, I'm kind don't of a you big know deal who too. I am? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, not at all. And and then the, it, sometimes the, it gives them a better feeling, or you know that they're oh, okay, you know, loosens things up, and they feel like maybe I can talk to people, or you know, hopefully someone else will do the same. So if we all do that, then we'll make everyone else feel comfortable. There we go. I'm gonna throw a shout out to my friend David Gilbert. You should practice the three feet meet method. Have you heard of this? Oh, yeah. If you're within three, <laughs> three feet, feet of feet. someone. <laughs> and so instead of just like it awkwardly acknowledging them quietly, just like, hey. And everyone's got name tags. You can uh, be sly and try and learn someone's name that way. But, right. I mean, you're within three feet. Yourself. Yeah. It looks great as a hashtag. And I'm totally not being serious. That, 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 was the, <laughs> that was a joke on Facebook. David put that out there and I said, David, did you oh, did you say right. that out loud or or look at it in print because he read Rob it Marley's, comes out a little different. His, oh God, uh, um, a friend of ours, Rob Marley, has got a fabulous blog about uh, just the various uh, like getting into voiceover and stuff like that. And he's got a great series on not just VO Atlanta but networking events in general, like everything from like pretty solid advice, like bathing. You know, have, t- having a <laughs> breath in on hand. <laughs> like, Brush your teeth. Yeah, exactly. Because you want to leave a good impression, not just be like, not nah, stanky face over there. But, um, <laughs> but that, that might have been where he got the three meet greet rule. But like we were saying. No, it's, it's three feet 
meat. Oh, you gotta get it right. Oh, no wonder. Oh. Yeah, I hope he. I, <laughs> yeah, used, I hope he used the right vowel combos. <laughs> but, oh man. All right, enough uh, enough, uh, enough shenanigans. Oh god. So we're about a little over halfway through the the, the uh, conference, and I'm wondering what everyone is still looking forward to. What's your What's the thing you're most excited about going going to, into Saturday? Hmm. Heather, why don't you start? <laughs> you guys are already like visibly okay. backing away. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start then. Okay. I'm looking forward to the closing ceremonies because oh, yes. last year that was very inspirational. Where the the inaugural. Oh my God! I use that word again. The inaugural. We, uh, that, I know. We, we that, started that our, like our podcast, podcast journey with that word, and it didn't go very well. <laughs> so anyway, it just—it's like one of those words. Like I've only seen it in books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the very first unicorn grant was presented last year to Jen Henry, and the the response and just the the show the outpouring of support was just amazing. There were tears everywhere, mm-hmm. and I'm hoping that is a repeat on Sunday or tomorrow at this point. Yeah. yeah, so what people, for people who might not be familiar, they introduced this new thing called the Unicorn Grant. And uh, and basically, it's just a huge step up into the industry. And it goes to someone who like really encapsulates the giving spirit, like not only the hard work and the talent that you would expect from a voice talent, but really that that support and willingness and generous of, or generosity of spirit to to help out and give back to the community that's been so good to us. So, uh, I mean, so this this included mentorship, demo production, uh, money for studio equipment. Subscriptions to uh, a lifetime subscription to Bedalgo. To Bedalgo, to Bedalgo yeah. Right. Oh, lifetime? Yeah, a lifetime membership. Nice. And I've talked to him. He's like, eh, we're not always going to do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, but it's an incredible, uh, it's just an incredible gesture. And, um, but the thing is, it's like, this is huge. And it would be really easy to be jealous or envious of someone getting all of these wonderful benefits, mm-hmm. but it couldn't have gone to a more deserving person. And I'm, I'm going to use this to say, we're going to talk about myself, but I... Shocker. <laughs> <I'm right>. If <laughs> you wouldn't, if you weren't, I was going to. So. Okay, well, thank you. And um, for people who don't know, mm-hmm. I have been nominated as a finalist for the same grant. Woo-hoo! And... Like, just just to be this far, because apparently finalists already get their own list of benefits. So it's like, so good. it's amazing, because it's like, basic. some people are like, what, what, what are you going to do if you lose? I'm like, I already won. <laughs> it's like, they basically told like, hey, Sean, you won, and you might win more. So that, like, <laughs> what, how can I be disappointed about that? Mm-hmm. And I'm alongside two wonderful people, Scott Chambers who and Susan Mazel, who I've met at VO Atlanta and have become fast friends. And I, I, we already said, like, no, even if we lose, we win, okay? Because we have an entire community of people who, who recognized, like, we, it's not like any of us were actively doing this for accolades or praise or, uh, or anything out of it. We just wanted to help people. And the fact that the community has seen that and recognized that and validated us is huge. I honestly, I'm going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. And so if you're here tomorrow and like, no matter what happens, I know I'm just going to be right. <laughs> so, watch the stairs this time. Yeah. Watch the stairs. So thank God nobody saw a recording, but when my team won the team challenge last year, I was so excited that I was just like, uh, I don't know. I, I ran up there like you're a basically baby Mary giraffe, Catherine Gallagher basically. from SNL years ago. <laughs> Molly yeah, Shannon. No, I almost like hit my temple on the freaking stair rail. And I don't know how I just kind of, like, your, your no, temple? No, it was like ridiculous. Like, full on? It, it, like, no, 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 no. I don't know how this happened. I kind of like, I tripped right as I got to the stairs, and then my arms kind of gumpied out or spider monkeyed out. I grabbed both, and I kind of just like shimmied like I was a kid on a jungle gym, and I managed to like just barely graze my head on my hand. And I was just like, seriously, like, I'm going to knock myself out right now. They're going to have to stop the conference. That, that video is out there. You should YouTube it. That's oh no, so David, happy. what are you looking forward to other than Sean falling again? Um, <laughs> that was it, really. Uh, <laughs> what was your biggest perk of the conference? Well, well I'm uh, I'm looking forward to heading back to the uh, GVA booth, but uh, I'm also going to be looking forward to the rates panel that's going to be going on today that's at right. 2 p.m. Uh, I may be going up and talking, so we'll see. I'm going to be in the audience. I think I'm going to be an audience participation, but mm-hmm. being uh, 
you know, uh, for those that don't know, the GVA uh, introduced a rate guide about two years ago. We're coming up on two-year birthday, so mm -hmm. that's uh, been a big player in the industry, and uh, you know, we're going to be talking about that. So, And don't undersell it. You were incredibly instrumental in that. You oh. practically spearheaded that. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> can, I, can I say that I have that printed out? I use it all the time because, oh. because I'm in Alaska, and I have not, you know, I've only been in this industry for four years, so... Uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and so exactly. it's been Me such neither. a godsend to be able to have something that's yeah. like, okay, well, I know that this mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm not selling out right. that's my industry. Goal. I'm not, yeah. you know, and it's and we just came out with Thank a brand you. new update. So uh, if you've mm -hmm. been using it and you didn't catch our, our live stream or, or get our email, we did do a massive update. So go back and check it out and uh, enjoy it because it's it's pretty good. Yeah, and we want we want to remind people that it is really a resource for everyone. It's a free resource, and uh, we just want to like we want to maintain the quality of the industry and fair compensation for all talent. And a lot of newer talent undersell themselves because they're like, ah, oh, I'll like, oh, yeah, I'll work for exposure. I'll yeah. work for experience. It's two hundred dollars yeah. for a national commercial. That's good, right? And it, but it's just, uh, it's just unconscious incompetence, and it sounds bad, but it just means you don't know what you don't know. And so you have this example, and it is a guide. It's not a gospel, okay? It's just to give you ideas, something like a starting point, because you can negotiate up or down based on those rates. But it's just to make sure that you're not damaging the industry as a whole. Because yeah. uh, as we continue to see, there is a fight to maintain fair rates for us. So Absolutely. That, yeah. And people have embraced it. There's some cool stuff. People are, uh, there's some pay to play that have embraced it. And there's one that man mandate that their, their clients uh, have to acknowledge that they've read it before they post every job. Wow. Uh, so, and there's others that are putting it into the algorithm so that there's going to be rates that'll be standardized. Uh, so that's kind of, that's really cool. So, so every year it gets more adopted and, we're hoping, nice. you know, the goal is for it to be kind of a non non union industry standard. And I think we're, I think we're it's there already. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So. Fantastic work on that. So, Heather, have you had a chance to think? What's the thing you're most looking forward to the rest of today or tomorrow? Okay, so I'm torn because part of me wants to give like the scholastic answer that's really gonna like, you know, give us the um, real answer. But the real <laughs> answer, the real answer is. I'm really excited about the improv tonight. Uh, nice. <laughs> and the re I, I live in Alaska. How often do I get to go to a show? Come on. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. And just because last night was really great as an opportunity, kind of outside of everything, just to talk with people that I was in X sessions with and, and kind of like, wow, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it was just a really great after hours. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Wonderful. All right. That's great. Yeah. So we're, we're almost out of time, unfortunately. I can't believe how fast this went. But any parting words anyone wants to impart on our audience, either in the room or <laughs> well, on, live on View Atlanta TV? Yeah, first off, I want to thank our audience member, Keela. <laughs> You've been she was charming here. enough to fill the room, guys. That's fine. <laughs> um, and, but I just want to say for any attendees who are here who see this, please come see us at either the GBA booth or if you see Paul or Heather walking around, say hi, introduce yourselves. And uh, again, Do you know where the bathroom is? I'm happy, you know I'm happy to answer those questions. Is, I know everything. He can help you out. Um, but yeah, like just really, whether or not you have access to a conference like VO Atlanta, find your tribe in other ways. You know, it might be through social media. It might be through a workout group uh, in person or locally. Build that network to help you, like to, to maintain your accountability and give you something like a leaping off point. To make to keep you accountable and to maybe a leaning point, maybe oh, to oh, lean oh, forward. Oh, oh, snap! Nice call. <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by View Atlanta. <laughs> lean forward. Lean forward. <laughs> and I just want to say thanks to everybody for for watching live on View Atlanta TV. Thanks to Gerald for allowing us to do this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and nice helping me set it up, honestly, yeah. <laughs> the, the equipment wise. Thanks to Brandon Thaxton and Cam Cornelius for setting up the streaming. And thanks to Kerry Donovan for saving my bacon right before we started where we had a tech issue. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate all the help, and thanks for having us. That's it for the VO Meter live at VO Atlanta. All right, so can you guys join it? Well, first off, we didn't thank our guests. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was right there right. sitting right next to us. Uh, okay. Thank you to Heather Masters. <laughs> and David Toback for coming on. So, and, and Keela for, for coming on uh, on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> very brave. All right, so since we have you guys here, we're going to wrap up. Paul and I are going to say thanks for watching the VO Meter, and then you guys say measuring your voice over progress. All right. All right. It has to be one take. It has to Ready? be one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already, you already got your practice. All right. Measuring so, your voice three. over progress?
two, measure. one. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching the, the VO meter. meter. Measuring, Measuring your voiceover progress. progress. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and a wonderful conference. Take Bye, everybody. Easy, guys. Lean forward. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the VO Meter, measuring your voiceover progress. To follow along, please visit www.vometer.com.